All right, today we are gonna build up a complete uh, pistol here, a Ruger Charger pistol, using the Enoch Industries uh, Odin chassis, a uh, FS1913 brace from SB Tactical, some mag pull parts, Arasaka finger stop, Ruger bolt, a uh, reworked barrel, uh, a Brownells receiver, a dead air mask suppressor, uh, some tandem part, uh, tandem cross parts, and a Holosun optic. So. This is super simple, um, but I, I think people just feel more comfortable when they see it um, happen in front of their eyes. So here we are. So we're gonna first start with the receiver over here and get this built. This is uh, Brownells' smooth top receiver. They don't uh, have these in stock anymore. They have the railed ones with their the integrated Picatinny rail, which is fine. But since I'm gonna be using this tandem cross shadow mount, that bolts onto the receiver and gives you multiple optic mounts right here. I'm gonna go with the flat top. And you can notice here that the outer two screw holes are filled with the plugs from the factory. And then these inner two holes are the holes that this uh, tandem cross plate is going to bolt to. So basically, I'm gonna put that on there. I'm gonna put a little dab of blue Loctite on these screws. That's a uh, 7 64ths, um, little cap head screws here put a little dot on there get this on there you want this just loctited so you don't have it wiggle loose when when you start having accuracy issues and you don't know why it's very frustrating and a lot of times it comes back to stuff moving and wiggling so what i'm going to use here is a uh, fix it sticks all-in-one kit here um, there's not really a published torque uh, on here that I saw, so I'm just going to go like 10 inch pounds. It's, I think they said eight, if I remember right, but the first graduation here is, is 15. So let's go 15, just kind of snugs up. You don't want to overdo it. You're just going into the, the, thin, the aluminum receiver on top there. So just give that a, just make sure we're good here. Okay, so that should be all we need that 764 bit for. So I'll put that off to the side. Now we're gonna mount the uh, Holosun 507. This is the, the V1. You see it's got the, the, the smaller buttons there. It basically mounts. The Tandem Cross provides you with uh, screws. I don't really love how small the Allen is on here. I believe it's a uh, 1 16th, yeah, 1 6, a 16th Allen. That's pretty small. It's kind of hard to get any kind of torque on there without fear of stripping it. And the cone head on this with this hollow sun, it seems like it wants to go through. So just be careful with it. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it. It's just, it doesn't seem as secure as when you do like an RMR with, a, with their Torx head screws. So just something to keep in mind when you're doing your own. And on an RMR, these are uh, between 10 and 12 inch pounds. So I'm gonna try to probably mimic that here. And you notice I use my finger tightening first, just so I know I don't have any cross threading or anything. Sometimes it's hard to do that when you have a tool in there. And I'm actually not gonna be able to use that because it's too big. So I'd have to use an extension, but for this purpose here, I'll go back and retorque it later, but it's not much. This little T-handle prevents you from over-torquing everything. You can't really grab it and really yank on it like you would another one. So there we go. Got the optic on. Everything's good to go there. So I can put that 16th tool away. Now I need to put the internals in here. Now the internals, I'm using a uh, factory Ruger bolt. I got this at Brownells. They sell them cheap. You can do an aftermarket bolt in this and uh, maybe get some more accuracy, but all in all, it's a four and a half inch barrel on a pistol platform. So, I mean, how much more are you expecting with, with a two minute dot as well? And then I'm using an OEM charging handle. Um, the interesting thing with these Brownells receivers is normally this is a cast aluminum part, but this is a billet part here because the Brownells made it. And this little nubbin right here that comes off that side, that is pretty sharp. So sometimes, you know, on a factory receiver, you might be able to just kind of tilt the bolt in and drop it in. But with this hard edge here, you may you have to go a little bit more straight on. So it's not hard, but people complain about it. So I'm just 
it's not it's not hard once you get used to it so put the charging handle in put your finger there pull it back and then hold it with this hand and then you're going to drop the bolt in because the the bolt uh recess right here interfaces with the charging handle block there so i'm basically gonna just use my right index finger to pull it back use my left finger to hold it back put the bolt in try to get it as straight as you can and then you see i just push that down and now i can go forward Easy peasy, just gotta get past that little hard edge. If you really wanna get anal, you could you could hit that with a file just a little bit to break that edge if you really are concerned about it, but I haven't had any issues once I've gotten mine in. So now that the bolt's in, we can put the trigger group in. This is a, a factory uh, trigger group with Tandem Cross's Ultimate Trigger Kit in there. The, I think it's their victory line. I love the, the flat serration face on there. Uh, good trigger, inexpensive, uh, everything's pretty much good to go with it. Uh, it also has their uh, automatic bolt release swapped in. And if you want to know how to install all those individual parts, uh, take a look at the channel. There's some videos. Just search Tandem Cross. Put the receiver pins in. Uh, this is a, a bolt buffer. It's not metal. The factory pin is metal, but it gives you that clack clack when the metal bolt contacts the metal pin. So I'm using this uh, poly one. And that is just to make it a bit quieter because we are using the suppressed. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to lock the bolt back. And we're going to put the barrel in. Uh, this barrel is pretty special. You can see it's got this metal spacer right here. This is from um, Connecticut Precision Chambering. This was a factory 16-inch barrel that has been re-chambered. Re the breech face is trued up. Everything was cleaned up. Uh, and and re the rechambering was the biggest thing. This barrel was tested to be pretty inaccurate. After Randy over at CPC reworked it, it is uh, pretty, pretty darn accurate for a four and a half inch barrel. And uh, there's some videos on the channel for that as well if you want to see it. But this spacer, since this whole breech face area has moved forward to clean it all up and rechamber it, you have to put the spacer in. So it is a loose spacer, so you just got to be careful. Uh, the factory barrel, if you're using any kind of factory barrel, that's all one piece. But... You basically slip it in the receiver square as you can get it and this is your v-block the v-block here is comes with the receiver you see it's got a kind of a heat treated goldish brown this is what uh, what happens to metal when you heat treat it and then don't finish it afterwards so that's how they come and here's the secret with it with this short of a barrel it doesn't matter too much but with any kind of factory barrel I typically use these long reach, this is the Bondus 532nd ball and Allen. And what that allows me to do is with the torque wrench and all the bulk of it, I can get in there and come on an angle and get away from the barrel and still turn it and torque it. So uh, <clears throat> I put a link to Amazon on those. That's where I got this one. And it is makes the job a whole lot easier when you're working on uh, Ruger barrels. Doing this with an L, Allen wrench is just not fun because you don't get a whole lot of throw with it and you don't get it. You have to keep turning it and taking it out, resetting it. Uh, you can use this line here where it meets the receiver as an indication that you're nice and square. You can get it snugged up, try to wiggle the barrel, make sure it's good. Then you also want to release the bolt and watch the extractor go into the breech face and make sure you're not having any contact issues. Uh, with it and that one looks all right so we should be good there okay so now we're going to torque this uh, I typically do these about 20 inch pounds there's kind of the great debate all over the internet but that's what kid recommends and uh, I'll trust their opinion I guess so just going to torque this down Sometimes we'll do 25 just because that's the nice um, demarcation on this all-in-one kit. But there's 20. Okay, so now we got a barreled action ready to install. So, pretty simple. Take the chassis. This is the chassis how you get it. Um, it's ready to go. Put the safety in a, in a halfway position. Get the bottom started. And then tilt it in, and then I usually put it back on, say for fire or whatever. And now you just have one screw here. Um, 
This one is a 9 64th. I wish they would have went a 5 32nd so I could use the same tool, but they didn't. So here we are. 9 30 or 9 64th. You're just going to go there. And I typically will match this to the, the barrel torque. So 20 to 25 inch pounds. Just You're just snugging it up. Nothing crazy. Okay, now that we have that, we can... Uh, what I would recommend, so I'm going to use this Arasaka um, finger stop. I already modified this. You can see I had to scratch, uh, file it all down on an old gun that didn't actually ha have M lock slots. But since this is an open channel here, I recommend you put this in before you put the barrel all the way in and everything uh, because you can get full access to the underside here and just make sure it is tightening without galling against the, the metal. Because, you know, if, if you ever do an M-lock that isn't straight, uh, it'll start to grab the aluminum funky, and you don't want that. So there we go. You see it's done a full cross across there, nice and nice and tight. Going to put the mask on. And this is the Deep 6 version of the chassis, which is the full three M-lock slots. It's meant for a 6-inch barrel and a suppressor. This is actually a four and a half inch barrel, tucking the suppressor even further, but it gives you enough room that I still get my finger on it. So I'm still good to go there. And uh, you get the extra M-lock slots. So I think that looks better than the regular chassis they sell, but kind of up to you. All right, two more things and we're done. Uh, we've got the grip. I recommend the MOEK grip from Magpul. It's just really small and, and compact and, and dainty on this one. And that's kind of what you're going for in this kind of situation. So do that. I was, these are another one you want to kind of hand start um, because you don't want to cross thread that at all. And this is kind of just shot in the dark down in the hole. Hopefully it grabs. Good to go. Don't want to go crazy on the torque on this one either. But just snug it up. We're good. And then one of the last things we need is to put the brace on. And the brace is a folding pistol brace. This is their polymer version. The strut is polymer. Uh, pretty simple install. They give you, or it came with this Allen wrench. I'll just use it. Uh, it's got this kind of keyed deal there. So I'm going to go put this on the bottom lug. The, the chassis gives you two vertical positions. And I know when this mount was on a different chassis that I had, it's uh, it's pretty low, so I want to make sure that my cheek is low as possible there. So I'm going to put it on lower of the two, and then just snug that up. Okay, and that should be it. Got an empty mag here just to kind of give you a look. So that is it in its extended um, configuration. And then to um, collapse it, the easiest way I've found is to put your thumb on the back. Curl your hand around the bottom, pull up, and flip it. And now you have a super compact uh, pistol, 22 suppressed gun. This gun is super quiet, super fun. It is compact. And then you just simply throw it out. You got two QD points here for slings if you want to do that. But man, I just this is one of the most fun little um, 22s that I've got. So that's how you build your own.